when you come out from the multiracial school, you become lost. Mm. You can easily use your you lose your identity. <clears throat> that that nearly happened to me. Mm. Up until I got liberated at Forte, and I'm glad that I went to Forte. Yeah. Sasol made me a politician. Huh. I told them one day, I will call them out on the things they did to black people. Hmm. Because many of our people in the generation, they got drunk. Yeah. But that's what I wanted to do. I was mm. on a war path mm. to implement the commitments we made to our people. Mm. But when you got there, you got uh, sabotaged by the administrators. Hmm. We are implementing for the first time in JNPD a crime prevention and combating unit. For the first time. Mm. So you yeah. need to pay the law enforcement mm. well so that they are able not to really be tempted to take any bribes. Mm. The CISO and Both Welsh Experience Podcast. Aye, aye, aye. Spread the fire. Welcome back to SMWX. And today I am really excited in our new studio, which you will see growing as time goes on, to welcome for our first interview in our new studio, Johannesburg MMC for Public Safety, Dr. Gwini Chaku. Dr. Chaku, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Susan. It's a conclave hey, of hey, doctors. You, you, can't, you can't be in this interview if you're not a doctor. So uh, it's, it's that simple. <laughs> hey, oh man. Hey, no, no. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Dala, we've been no, good postponing good it. Good good mm. and, and thanks so much for, for being here. Yeah. You're one of the most interesting figures in South African politics because you do have a PhD yeah. in chemical engineering. Yes. But you're also a politician. You're now governing in Joburg. Mm. Tell us about your your journey, your early life, and how on the one hand you're a doctor and on the other hand you're also, you know, one of the leaders of Joburg now. Yes. No, um yeah, this it's very interesting because so many people have been asking me, but yeah, I, I will but you are you've got PhD in engineering and you've been working for Sasso, being a consultant for okay. 18 years. Hmm. I've designed um I've designed pumps, I've designed uh, petrochemicals, um, you know, uh, petrochemical plants. I've been to England reading. Um, 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 I mean, <clears throat> if I can, let's say, take, you know, the whole step back is uh, mm. after um, I, I studied at Bukule back in the days and right. <clears throat> in my high school. Mm. And then so many people have I asked, what well, they don't know, Uri, um, during the Bishop Massacre was there. Okay. And uh, I was very active with Sasko back in the days. Hmm. And so I wonder what means they don't know that. Mm, mm, and mm. some of my friends there, when I go back, they, they know Mutini there. Mm. Very problematic at school mm. um, because we used to, you know, um, hear this thing, Free Mandela and all of that. And Kai, back, back home, mm, mm. if you look at the people that were associated with it, at home, at yeah. home uh, my aunt uh, got married to them, Tanya family. Mm. Mm. Uh, right, right. So Ukrifitsim Kleng. So So you will have um, a Demkleng family coming to the Chaco family. Mm. And that's when, you know, I've, I've got to be really exposed in politics. Interesting. And then also my mom, Mandisa Chwako, mm. and Mrs. Usis, Usis Pumla, mm. uh, Apekai, uh, in any one. Sure. Remember most they... Is that the, M. Tanzania? M. Tanzania. Oh, okay. M. Tanzania. Okay, wow. So the uh, state police used to hunt for you know, they used to start, they used to hunt for the politicians. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, there was a guy where too, I can say it now, uh, he's my role model. Mm. They call him Jeff Waben. He was a unionist. Mm. And I saw him as a father figure. And he was assassinated. Mm, mm. And most of the time they used to jam. Yeah, one was to jam. I was to jam in the dining room. Mm, and mm. Kumnand, you know, when these comrades come in, we're still young that yeah. time. So Jeff Wabena used to come in, they would tell what they were running away. They were taken by the state uh, police and they were tortured. Hmm. And the one I, I still remember quite well when he was articulating it, when they were jamming Pine Lin, is that when he, he disappeared for a month yeah. and then he was uh, made to lie upside down and then they they, they actually, they, and, and then they suspended him hmm. like that. They were trying to really pull him. Sure. And they shocked him like that. So I was so shocked what mm. is happening in the country. And mm. there was a time in Mdansane where there was a lot of um, 
uh, looting. I think there was now Umandela was he was coming out. There was those negotiations so coming around out. Late eighties. Was it early late eighties? Yeah, sure. eighty seven, eighty eight. Sure, sure. That time, and Tanzania was very vibrant, mm. and we hear that good there's going to be negotiations. Yeah. Uh, political prisoners were coming out. State security was pushing. Yeah. And we're there, man. I'm mm. not mm. guesses. If you know those all those shops there, which are dilapidated. Mm. Now, around that time, there was looting. I was there. Mm. But <clears throat> so um, we and then we had Ukozo. That mm. time Ukozo sure. came out, you know, said he will never be uh, ruled by, you know, by the by what I know. I'm a I'm a band, right? I'm a cop. I said that he will never be the. And sure. we were on a taxi, and a taxi just stopped people, were very angry. Mm. There was a riot, and then we heard that Chris Hani is around. Mm. You know, we're very fascinated about him because instead of Gashe, when he will come, we hear that there's a guy there. Mm. He just comes out from the, the community, like well, while you're sitting on, on grandstand, yeah. because of his tactics, his mm. military tactics, Chris Hani will just come out anyway. So sure. we said, hey, who is this figure? You know, this mm. guy. So we like Chris Hani. And then when he passed on uh, that time, you know, there was a lot of uh, problems. Especially in the, in, the, in the Eastern Cape. That a was a big moment, Eastern Cape. Yeah. And then I wonder, the people that uh, they don't know that time is that we were very inspired because there were units that were formed. We used to go in into the forest and march. You know, we're fighting. That's why we know how to march like this. Hmm. You know, we knew how to march like the, hmm. you know, the Soviets. So I came out around that kind of influence. Where even my, my uncle, you know, you got those uncles, uh, Abatana hmm. Marasta. Mm. So uh, in, in, in his place, in his shack, he uh, used to have that old ANC mm. uh, flag, mm. the one that is gold, black, green and gold without any wind. Sure, sure. And then he had this scroll of a, of a freedom charter. Hmm. I remember I think he says, people shall govern. You know, we used to see it when we were growing up. Oh. And he's saying that, yeah, you know, hey, mm. Mandela is coming. Don't mm. Know. Mm. That guy is still now, you know. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I can see that he's starting to accept that I am the EFF when he's starting to to really see what yeah, is there. But he's still, but he's still, you know, there those people were staunch and sure, they said, no, sure. you know, you are still too young. But mm. I've got mm. influenced by, by by that, and it was good and fair when the Mandela came out uh, in prison and um, I voted in 1994. And then, uh, okay, but during that time of the riot and mm. there was a move that there was this. Uh, you know, schools and everything. There was a uh, model C schools mm -hmm. coming out. Uh, so quickly, because of this political dynamics happening in the country, immediately, I think I finished up in that multiracial schools called uh, Hudson Park High School. Interesting. So, okay. so I there was a guy. There was a this. <clears throat> there was this relationship between the East London schools and Bukula Technical High School. Okay. So we used to go and visit the, the white schools mm -hmm. and, and, and look at their culture and how they actually do stuff. So mm -hmm. because I've loved mathematics, because, yeah. uh, because my core passion is mathematics. Yeah. Yeah, I went all the way with mathematics. I did, I did applied mathematics. I did um, a bit of pure mathematics. Mm -hmm. Can uh, I ask you about yeah. that? Because you're growing up in Tanzania. Is that yeah. where you grew up? Yes. And you spoke about an uncle living in a shack. So yeah. a lot of my family also comes from Mdanzani. Mdanzani so I know yes. yeah. even as townships go, Mdanzani is, yeah. is, is, yeah. is, 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 a, is a tough township. And mm. how does your love for mathematics oh. in that environment grow? Mm. No, look. And um, how, how, did you, how did you get good enough at it? You know, is to, it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> In mathematics, look, Ekaya e is that we, we actually got very better off uh, mm. when my, remember my aunt got married to them, Klingens. Sure. And then they were taken by the ANC to, to Ireland. Mm. So Wabumin mm. mm. was there and also Nomagas. Magas is still, is still mm. there, but, but sure. They, sure. they're not married anymore. But yeah, in those times, yeah, we sort of form a four-roomed house. Mm. They, we started to really, you know, they extend sure, a bit, you sure, know, like that. Sure, sure, but sure. my uncle kept on his shack because, you know, he does, you know, like my rastak dala and he does his stuff, you know. Interesting. Yes. <laughs> yeah, things that so, we were yeah, talking about. Yeah, no, we're talking about it. So, safety, was, yeah. well, only he's in his, uh, you know, shack, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. So my, well, my love for really mathematics is that some people don't understand that I had a problem of minus sign. I could not subtract mm. for the longest time. I mm. started to learn how to subtract when I was in standard four. Mm. I used to memorize 
the, the, the 10 minus 10 minus 6 is 4 mm. 10 minus mm. 3 is 7 mm. I, I don't know someone they say that maybe i'm dyslexic or something wrong mm. there's something with my brain but when i when when i figured it out i wanted to do more and more and more mathematics mm. so i did more mathematics so when i was a standard four i used to do the the mathematics of 10 at 7 mm. and then and then I'll, I'll just be moving like that and then when i was in standard eight i did the matric of standard 10. Mm. and then when i was in standard nine i was already doing calculus mm. calculus mathematics which is the the the, the mathematics of um <clears throat> a first year sure. then from there then when i was in standard 10 i was starting to look at the other mathematical theories like hein borel theorem riemann uh riemann mm. uh, in integrals and all of integration and all of those mm. fascinated by you know by by calculus what this calculus, you know, mm. calculus and, and Riemann geometry. So it was used to fascinate me. So mm. I just dived into mathematics. And that's why, I mean, my little brother is more of a journalist. He likes English and languages. Yeah. But God didn't give me that. <laughs> yeah. You're the hard yeah. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the side, I'm the mathematical side. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and yes, I like reading there and there, but I started to really like reading when I started to be interested in politics. Yeah. Because <clears throat> I I mean, I was embedded, I was more of a professional. Mm. Mark my word. And I didn't even think that I would actually be in a branch of any political party. Yeah. But I had I mean that time we you know, we like I mean the only political party that was appealing at that time was the ANC. Mm. Mm. But um, you know, we, we we were very aware of the dynamics of the country and what's mm, happening. Mm. And when we went, I mean, <clears throat> in my in standard seven, when we had the black school, yeah. Um, I, I mean, there was that synergy between the black schools and the white school. They yeah, would take yeah. us as black the white school just to see the culture. And I mean, we did not have any facilities, yeah. sports facilities. So we'll 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 play with the white kids there, and <clears throat> you know. You know, first time you see how oh, wow there's a field here mm. you know there's a ball you know and then um one of the teachers they they approached me look uh, you can see that academically you're very good mm. and especially in physics i liked physics as well physics mm. mathematics and biology mm. those are my really passions on the on that side so he said to me okay um would you would like to finish off at our schools wow <clears throat> so first they took me to Potrex. Potrex was the same as 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 Butule. Butule technical. Sure. What Butule was doing was technical. Mm. Technical drawing. We had trades there. We we're doing fitting and turning, mm. mechanics and woodwork, everything electronics. So sure. that's when we did the flip flop circuits. I mean, I did the flip flop circuit, the ICs, the resistors, the capacitors. We used to do like get you know the the, the viral board and do that viral board that you see and put components in mm. and solder them in. So I said, for me to move from Mutule to another white school, let me go to another uh, the, at Port Rex, as a poor sure. called called Port Rex there. So when I went to Port Rex, I said, no, I'm coming from Mutule, so I want to finish up here, you know, because of instabilities in the, in the township and all that, so that I can finish up my matric and go to university. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to take me back to know you can't do standard seven, must start standard six. I said, no ways, mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. It will be something that will regret for the rest of my life. So. There was another school next to it called Hudson Park. So Hudson Park High School, they welcomed me very well. I mm. wrote a test. They said to me, what, do you want to come to Hudson Park? Told them, look, one fish up the school and all of that, you know, political developments that are there. <clears throat> just that I just want to ensure that I finish my this high school so that I'm able to contribute maybe one day in, in the country. Mm. I know there's so many of my friends and politicians who did not finish that time because they were busy with the Kosas. Kosas that time, Sasafuna was funny man. You know, they must they must give money to the, you know like the, to the students. They were demanding chalk, yeah, you know, choco, and you know demanding all those things that we wanted that time. So I so I graduated from there. I mm. I, I I I I did not get a a bursary. Okay. To yeah, I wanted to do medicine. Interesting. Yeah, I wanted to do medicine because my aunt now, after she came back from Ireland, she was mm. a doctor, mm. so she had a surgery. So I used to go and visit her surgery every time. So I wanted to be a doctor, but uh, UCT, so I applied at UCT. So UCT, instead of taking me to in, you know, to 
uh, to the thing is uh, to 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 the MPCHP. Mm. Uh, so they said, no, no, um, you, you will go to BSC. And, and I want to look at the, the, the fees there. The fees were very high. Sure. So, but with the marks that I, I got, because yeah. I, I got a, a B. <laughs> in that, uh, yeah, so wow. I said, look, I, because it was very challenging. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure the transition to go into that school, to be in yeah. that new environment. And yeah, still... I mean, they wanted, you know, getting a, I think could have been mathematics and mm. then and see those things of English and then, uh, you know, so it was around there. So, mm. and the, the guys wanted like, you know, very A, 90s yeah, yeah. and everything sure. like that. So I had a problem with Afrikaans there, the whole change of culture, yeah, I mean, but mathematics did very well in mathematics and uh, all this other stuff with physics and biology. So, so how did you go from, from there to chemical engineering? How did you okay. end up there? So, yeah. so I went to Forte. Okay. So I went to four. When I went to yeah. Forte, that's what they thought was the beginning of everything. Mm, mm. So when the leadership talks about Fanon and Steve Biko, yeah, mm. that's where it all began. I experienced it there. When mm. I got out of um, something that people, they, they, they need to know, and, and maybe something that we don't talk about it. Yeah. And maybe do a bit debate at some point, and mm, mm. maybe some of the people will, might actually raise it. When you come out from the multiracial school, you become lost. Mm. You can easily use your, you lose your identity because sometimes you want to fit in. You, 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 you forget that you're black. Mm. Mm. You are stuck in some vacuum you don't know. Mm. And I think that some of my colleagues I started with there at, at Hudson Park are still stuck on that. We, we do see it, but <clears throat> that that nearly happened to me mm. up until I got liberated at Forte. And I'm glad that I went to Forte because for the first time I could see a black lecturer, it was Uza doing mathematics. Mm. He did an integral, a calculus, because remember, it, 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 um, if you read all the, the, if you read the mathematical books, it's a white person. Mm. Um, you you have um, what is it, um, Newton, well, Newton, Isaac Newton, sure. uh, Riemann. Mm. They, they are doing those things. And then when I saw Kuza, uh, it was uh, Mr. Kuza at that time, mm. and then he was um, you know, responsible for physics. And you see them doing this integrals mm. and differentials. <laughs> Whoa! And then there's what a guy they call Professor Sereto. Mm. Was Professor Sereto and uh, Professor Mtebuk. I mean, Professor Sereto, when you read, read his history, he was a, a physicist. He was doing what was called like Schrodinger, Schrodinger wave equation. Mm, mm. A black man doing Schrodinger wave equation. <laughs> you have no idea that equation. Mm. <laughs> mm. It's the equation that can explain what's happening with these cameras. Sure. It actually explains um, the, the how the, 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 the matter the, the atoms, yeah, yeah. how they are, how they are, you know, the, the configuration of the atoms mm. and can tell in terms where they wanted to locate where is the, where's the atom, um, you know, where is it at its location sure, sure. and all of that. So that is, that theory is a very deep, deep theory. Quantum mechanics. Quantum stuff. mechanics. Yes. Quantum mechanics. So that guy, you saw it using Sir Schrodinger equation and solving it. Wow. Solving Schrodinger's equation mm. on the board, and he's a black guy. And that gave you a certain... Yes, yes no, that thing, that thing liberated me straight. <laughs> <laughs> it was the Schrodinger's equation for oh, you. <laughs> that, that Schrodinger's <laughs> equation, and there was a... And then also the very difficult theory was uh, the, the theory on electromagnetism. Okay, yeah. Um, gas law. Because, mm. you know, you have an integral equation, which, which you want to find an area under, you know, and then now the gas equation had a, a circle, they call it a circle in integral. Okay. Yeah. So, so when you listen to this black guy, there was a guy that, that he was very weird in physics. Right? Mm. It was, it was Mr. Bangan, a very good guy. Uh, mm. <laughs> and for what his office, it was very weird office at Forte. And the guy just comes out in physics at Forte. Mm. Mm. You come out, 
does electromagnetic uh, equations. So that's that I forgot those equations. Mm. Very hairy equations. You mm -hmm. like with partial, with differential, right. partial h, partial t times partial d, partial thing, yeah. th like that. You know, that guy would come in and do those things. I'm like looking at these people, like, are these black people doing that? Mm. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. Sure. And then Professor Mdebuga, I think it was Professor Mdebuga, yeah. He will now do what is called a solid state physics. Now the solid state physics will will explain in terms of the crystal nature, the, the crystal structure. What happens when you have a crystal and you put heat on it? What happens to the molecules inside? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, um, those you, you know, those are the, uh, the, the very fundamental theories on semi uh, semiconductors and okay and other exotic materials. Mm. And those are done by black people. And then Forte had an electron microscope and all those things, and they were black people. Mm. They were not like many white people mm. there now. Mm. So that's when I got inspired that this, I can, I can that's do that. Path. So I did that and I finished at Forte. So at Forte, I, um, I, I, must, um, I majored in applied mathematics, physics and chemistry. Mm. At Forte, so three majors. Normally, you do two majors. So I, I majored with three, and then I passed it with a the cum laude. Mm. Then I got, I went to UCT. So Great. while okay. I was at Forte, I was corresponding with UCT with the cosmology mm. department. But it was that time was Peter Dansby, Professor Peter Dans, Dr. Dansby. So I was looking at the cosmology, mm. Mm. Um, the theory of a special theory of like of relativity by Einstein. And so I was so confused. I don't know why I lied to you. I was so confused. So was this... But honest? while it's Forte. Right. After, after trip, you, were, you were busy corresponding. Yes, but I was busy corresponding, yeah. yeah. It was the time that they were starting with that thing of online thing. Right, right, yeah, right. It was the, the, back in the day, it was like in 1996. And then when you went to UCT, was that... So now yeah. after I finished... Yeah. So I finished at, at, at Forte. Sure. So I went. There was a, a special program at mm. UCT mm. where you can you could you could squash first year, second year in one, uh, second year and third year in engineering, chemical engineering. Sure. You can do that. So, but my I was interested also in electrical engineering. So when they I didn't the full lectures, but I didn't like it. Mm. But I took that that course. Sure. So I did the four year engineering. I did it in two years. So I did my first year, second year, I got accredited mm. of the other courses. So mm. first year and second year, I, I killed it. Yeah. So I was in, so when I came in, the guy in second year, I was new. Mm. I met them in third year. <laughs> <laughs> That's a flex. Yeah. That's an academic And then from there, yeah. the following year, we're all in fourth year. Yeah, they were like, I was finishing. You know, you I'm I like, you were... <laughs> yeah. so I was doing reactor design, uh, thermodynamics and uh, mm. mass and energy balance, mm. you know, so, but I got accredited on the, other like useless courses of mathematics of yeah. just cruising through a zone which <laughs> useless do that. hey those courses child yeah. people <laughs> <laughs> so i finished that and i fell in love with reactor design petroleum mm -hmm. whereas others at, at uct you could major in in, in uh, mineral and processing i mm -hmm. didn't i thought it was very simple i didn't like that that dirty stuff and also you can do bio engineering fermentation mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Didn't like that, but I was focused more into petroleum. Sure. I think I was quite fascinated. So that's why um, after I finished my engineering there, mm, mm. after I finished the, the chemical engineering at UCT, I further applied for masters. So I thought, well, when I woke up, I was like, hey, mm. I'm an engineer, I'm finished here. Mm, it was mm. two years, it was like too quick. Mm, mm. I said, hey, oh, let, let me do masters here. Mm. And I did masters and my, my, my masters was on... Uh, and what year was this now? That was in... Uh, so I finished my matric in 1994, mm. uh, 1993, joined for 1994, 95, 96. Then I joined UCT, 97, 98. So, okay, late yeah, 90s. 90s, yeah. yeah. And then 99, then I, I, <clears throat> then I joined the master's program. And UCT must still have been quite a, quite a white institution back then as well. Yes, uh, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Very so, well, yeah. So, so you had that mixed school, then you went into UCT. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. So Forte... My, 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 my mindset in terms of um, politics and my response to what was happening there, mm. it was very interesting. Um, I was no longer, I don't, know what I, I don't know how to put it. I, when I went to your city, I knew that like, I can do it, mm. Mm. whether they are there or not. Yeah. Whether they are there, when, because at UCT, you will, will have whites decide and, and blacks decide. Really? Yeah, it was like that. Hmm. I mean, but it was not, I don't think it was more for racism. It's just that you you preferred 
yeah, that's just how oh, the they, culture that's is. how, yeah, that's, a, you know, mm. that's how we just preferred to sit. But the way that I was forecasting my work, those are just as no one, because mm. I think, I think being at, at Forte, taking part in struggles and Sasco struggles, Pasma struggles, and list going to mass meetings and listening to guys talking mm. on the issues of the student, like Forte, that there were problems of accommodation, there mm. was a problem of food, there were a lot of um, black people coming from the villages who did not have anything. Mm. Mm. We had to take them and we we, we, we call squatting. We squat with many of them. They will come to my room and I'll be sitting there, said, no, they are coming from a village. Then they will, I'll probably have about 10 or 20 of them. And we'll be stuff in the room hmm. up until we will go out there and mm. and then really find accommodation for them. Sometimes hmm. we'll even go violently and open some of the closed doors hmm. and place people physical. Hmm. And then we'll share a meal card. Because myself, I had a lot of, you know, these sponsors from, I had a sponsor from Armsco, because of my good marks there, sure, you know. Sure. So so Forte had that program that mm. I think many companies were were, were at Forte supporting. Mm. Mm. So I had a lot of uh, sponsorship that mm. was there. So I would share my meal card with the with the people. Sure. Then we'll eat and all of that. So so that's where this my my, my politics were really shaped by Forte. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there were guys called Abu Eugene from Pasma, very radical and vocal. Mm. Um uh, guys, I think they were and then, you know, these things of, of the stairway, you know, you know them from there. And mm. you know, it will be violent. You go to classes <clears throat> where there's, there's a stairway. So, so those, those, politi those, those politics of the mm. country, I've learned them there. I made many of the, of the comrades mm. there. Mm. Then when I went to, to UCT, I was fine. I got really, really conscientized. I was yeah. never confused again. Sure, sure. And then um, one thing that, then I joined Sasso. Okay. I, I did. Yeah. I did my uh, must. I did my my undergrad, and then I did masters. Mm. Then after masters, I and then I did one year PhD back then. Okay, sure. Um, so we're developing this new this new machine for Sasso. But I've been I've been studying for seven years. Yeah, I saw sure. people with cars and mm. you know mm. nice living, nice my family, people, family as yeah, well. Yeah. I have to support you know. Yeah. And then I, I decided, I, I called Sasso. Well, I, to buy something nice for that uncle. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I put okay. ladies. Yeah, I put ladies. Yeah, I'm still there. Still there. Lovely, lovely. Shout, shout out to, yeah. shout out to that <laughs> yeah, He's yeah. there. At the time, I was laughing when we were having the anniversary there. Yeah. <laughs> so. Did he come? Well, what happened is that he just saw many fighters at yeah. home. And then he just came in drunk, you know, with that. <laughs> hey, hey, what is happening here? Yeah. Hey, let's not hey, even talk about Tosa Uncles and Hey, hey, now, what are you doing here? <laughs> I said, hey, man, <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then he, he was next exactly to the, the dog. Uncle. Yeah. And then he, yeah. he, when he does his things, then, yeah. you know, later on, you're going to four, five, <laughs> eight. <laughs> and then he was standing next to the door there. He said, yeah, these people are still here. Yeah, I'm <laughs> clean. <laughs> and then we'll have a meeting and everything. Yeah, yeah. Wait, man. It's not necessary. Yeah. <laughs> so now it's still it's a very close uh, yeah, yeah. family of ours. I, like, yeah. I love him to yeah, bits. Lovely. lovely. So then when we're there, so, we shout. Yeah. So Cecil, mm. so you went, you became a professional. Yeah. Right? And I'm guessing this is early 2000, somewhere there. Yes, yes. Um, 2001. Yeah. I joined them. Okay. So yeah. I'm, I'm interested mm. um, in... How you go from that yes, and yes. your professional life, yeah. you're a chemical engineer with a <laughs> yeah. master's degree, mm -hmm. one year of a PhD under your belt, you're yeah. working at Sasol. Mm. Oh. I, I then come to know of you as an EFF politician. Yes. Ah, you, you want to square yeah, the second. Yeah. yeah. Ah. I, I explain the Schrodinger's equation yes. behind, mm -hmm. behind that. Ah. <laughs> you, you're not going to believe I told them one day, I will tell. Yeah. Sasol made me a politician. Huh. I told them one day, I will call them out on the things they did to black people. Hmm. I told them that one day I will call you out and how you frustrated very potential, very highly academic students. Hmm. And what you did that is unforgivable, is very hurtful. Hmm. Because many of our people in the generation, they got drunk. Hmm. They were drinking like mad. They were, were sitting. I was, I was taken to... Um, from UCT, remember I was sponsored by Armsco. Then from Armsco, I went to 
So when I entered the master's program, so I was supported by Sasol. Yeah. Very good company. Um, I can say that they gave us a lot of, uh, you know, the experience and uh, opportunity, you know. Mm. But there were those rotten people there. Mm. Because that time, the people who were still, mm. they, 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 they were still racist. People sure, who did not sure. believe in black talent. Mm. Unfortunately, we were in that Mm, uh, I in that, I mean, like, yeah, back like if, even even now the professional space like, is tough. But back then, I don't even know what what you have no I, no yeah. one knows about that thing. Mm. Unlike those who were there, and they will never believe it. Sure. What, I mean, what if, kind of things? Um, myself, myself, myself I, I was an academic. Yeah, I yeah, loved exactly. what I do. Yeah. I, I, You're a mathematician. You know, I went there, and some of the people I met in in my master's program mm. were coming from Sasol, mm. could not speak English perfectly, mm. and I I educated them, and I I was having tutorials with them on how that the plant works and mm. how does everything work, you know, uh, the the theory of engineering. Because mm. others were just speaking Afrikaans. Mm. Mm. Now, when we went to Sasol, there. Mama, my promotion, I was a, a junior engineer with the mm. guy with the masters. Mm. When the, the the policy was saying that when you when you coming in at Sasol with a masters mm. uh, thing, you you are going to be a junior just to get basics of Sasol for six months. Sure. My promotion took to two years, and the people who came with me who were white mm. within three months they were up there. Mm. Remember, uh, uh, being a junior, I have to support people back home. I slept, I mean, remember when you're coming from there, you know, Tina, Abanda Bamiya, adults you don't understand. Mm. We, we, we're coming from school. You know, we don't have this luxury of your parents coming with you with the cars and everything. We are span there. Mm. When, we, when I finished there, I took a taxi up mm. to Sasselberg and I got there, I had to go and check accommodation. Mm. And I got a room like this, small as this. Mm. And my bag was my, uh, my what was my, sure. my, my, my dress. It was my, I slept in that bag for almost a month, wanting to get paid. People don't know that. With the whole master's degree. I didn't have, I didn't have money. Mm. Like St. Jibuti, you know, when you're starting to work and, and you know, everything is, is done, dusted yeah. now. You don't have that, that luxury mm. of those uh, monies from bursaries. Mm. Mm. It was done now. You, you know that by the end of the month, you're going to get paid. Yeah. So didn't have any, any bed. Secondly, I didn't have an iron. Mm. So I used to take my clothes and put them under my on my bag. Sure. I'll sleep on top of it and then it will be ironed out. And then still come to work. So it's still come to work fresh and then I'll, I'll, I'll extend my work. I used to pull like 20 to 12 hours and I'll mm. get out of, I mean, I wanted to know Sasol, how it operates. Mm. So when they leave at six o'clock, what, four or five, I'll be here till eight o'clock mm. and producing all the Sasol processes, the history of Sasol. Um, I mean, I was in the research and development, so I had to get to the history, how it started and who started it and uh, all these people. Mm. And I must know now what, what the Sasol want to do in the future. So we were developing a new catalyst there called the Sasol, the, the Sasol catalyst, a fresh catalyst. Currently they're using an iron catalyst, so they wanted to use a precipitated. They wanted to move away to a new, a new catalyst. So mm. I was there doing research, issued bulletins. Mm. Like, you know, some, some research work will go to the pilot plant, run pilot plants, write what you've seen, and also you do modeling. Mm. You'll model and all of that. So, and I was like, <laughs> I'm supposed to be a, just a normal engineer now. Mm. At least move from 7,000, there was six, 7,000. At least you go to 13,000 there. Sure, sure. At least you are able to send money home and also move now from that space to a two flat place. Mm. We now are flat here and at least we can give you some bit of dignity. Sure, I want to sure. be engineer. Ah, they took me two years. Mm. The guy, every time that he said, and I asked my, my supervisor, but why am I not being promoted? He said, no, he forgot. Yeah, and then secondly, he said on the, on the next year that he had to go to, uh, he said he, he had to go somewhere overseas. Mm. It was every year. It's also, I think, well, quarterly sort of, you, you will have, they call them defense meeting. You take your people you want to promote mm. to that promotion meeting. Mm. Uh, that guy used to take my name. And I asked him, hey man, maybe I thought there's something wrong. I said, mm. maybe, what's wrong with my report? Mm. Did I do anything wrong? I, that's what I said. Like, maybe, did, did I write reports? Is my English okay? Mm. I started to really doubt myself. No, sure. Yo, that guy, they made me to really doubt myself. Mm. Mm. And I hated that phone. And then every Friday, will go and convene to a place called Sandra in Sasolberg. I didn't know it. The people on those days, all the professionals, 
uh, chemical engineers, analytical chemists, everyone were, were all put under uh, thing is under a a, a, a a discrimination that time. Mm -hmm. You know, we will to park there our cars or think we'll buy alcohol. We'll drink from Friday up until Sunday. Hmm. Many of the of the young potential mm -hmm. uh, uh you know guys and, and others I heard that they they, they became alcoholics. Mm -hmm. um, others they really after some time they got better jobs and sure, sure. so we drank. I'm not going to lie to you, we drank. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that problem, we saw that it was not only in, in Sasol alone. Yeah. We saw a letter coming out from Alexander Forbes, where a master's, a, a, a master's individual, mm -hmm. a, an accounting person says, I am here photocopying tenders mm -hmm. for white people mm -hmm. who are even junior to me, and I'm not given any work. That time, black people were not given work. Mm -hmm. You will be promoted there, so you uh, you can go, uh, you can go get you know if they really like you. I want to know this one. He looks as if uh, we can control him. <laughs> uh, yeah, then you will be promoted you know, to level six. Uh, mm. uh, you know, it's level six, level five, level four. Uh, you sit there, you don't you don't have any decision making powers. Mm. Like who mm. Ubongani was in level three, was coming from overseas. They just put him level three, but Ubongani didn't have any powers. So they, 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 they did that to us. And when you have what you call a risk meeting or hazard or whatever meeting, mm. they were doing in Africans. Hmm. I'm like, the pump, I'm like, what the pump, what the pump, what the what the Send that fluey, <laughs> fluey. <laughs> but it was, but I studied it and I really, I, 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 it was hard, but I mean, it was those people that time, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, fast forward now, I mean, done many things have changed. I've got so many colleagues that I'm working with. Mm, mm, There's a mm. woman called Henley, very, very good woman. Mm. Uh, we knew each other from those days. No, sure. Very, very uh, perfect. A lot of change, but, but, change, but back black, then. Black professionals yeah. actually just don't talk enough about mm. the experiences of those days, mm. even of these days, and, and how hard it can be as a black professional. You've worked so hard. Mm. You've Jeez. done the studying. Mm. You've got the credentials, but still, mm. as you get into that that workspace, yeah. you start from the bottom all over again. CIC is correct. You know, when you talk about these things, people, they have never experienced it. You know, when he says to me that when they look at you, they see that you are just black. It doesn't matter. Mm. You can have your master's, your PhD, anything. Mm. Mm. But that thing is there. Mm. And when they say that, oh, oh, Petrus Mutsebo will just walk in there, uh, maybe he goes to what those, those nice white um, malls and everything. Ah, they will not say anything. It, it's very bad. That thing broke me, actually. Mm. It, it changed, like, the mind changed. And then I started asking questions. What is happening and all of that? We even went to Mexisul. Mexisul was a, a board member there. Okay. So. We even went to Tultuli House. So, Bill, can you help us here? Mm. Mm. We are being uh, really racially, you know, mm. dis discriminated. But we, we told one of the Sasso executives, then in Sasso they had what you called a uh, sessions now, sensitization sessions, sure, sure. because there were some old guard who did not want mm. to change. So shame, they started to change, uh, slowly but surely getting there now, at least uh, some mm. of the people who came after us yeah, started yeah. to have opportunities as well, so being recognized. Mm. I mean, I believe that it's not the way it was before now. Sure, sure. But for us, that same group, it was mm. very like, mm. ah, I changed, bro. Mm. I changed after that. And it was for me, it was the point of no return. Mm. I became politically charged. Interesting. I read, and then... Um, then I was, when I was there, I joined the, the branch of the ANC there sure. um, 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 in, in Sasolbeck. Mm. Started to just go and check and what's happening and all of that, just to try. Because I saw that I followed everything, I yeah. consulted everything, and, but people said, no, you know what? Uh, you know, this is thing that we deal with this thing political. And mm. I started to, you know, we've been there in the ANC, we know it, but mm. I've never mm. been in a branch. So I started to be there, just listening, and but not participating really. Sure. <clears throat> and then, uh, and then, yeah, that was 2004, fast, then mm. I went to Deben, mm. came back. <laughs> okay, then, so, yeah. so I, what I'm interested, I think... Then I changed. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm coming there. So, so now, yeah. um, the moment of, of the EFF yeah. um, from the ANC, mm. I think part two, we're going we're gonna to go from when yeah. you joined the ANC. Yeah. Um, but I'm interested in the moment of joining the EFF yes. and leaving the ANC. Yes. And because you've, if I'm not mistaken, you've been one of the people in the EFF from very early on. Yes. 
Um, talk us through that in that moment. Yeah, very quickly, yeah. Yeah. No, no. 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 I, was, I was actually getting to that now. Yeah, yeah, sure. I was actually moving now into, into politics now because I was... I hit this mind. Yeah. That's yeah. mine now, Guti. I, I used to say that, I mean, why am I a second-class citizen in my country? That mm. is a question I used to ask. I didn't know that, Guti. I'm, I'm raising a political question. Sure, sure. And all these people, I used to analyze them, your Nelson Mandela, Tabo mm. Mbeki, mm, mm. said maybe on, 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 on Mandela, had a lot of opportunities, and Tabo Mbeki, you, you could see that mm. you can walk, and mm. PE and everything that, yeah, you can mm. feel it. But, mm. Mm. but now, you know, that we are second-class citizens, and when we're at Sassol and all these areas, and then um, I, 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 I resigned at Sasson. I went to Deben. Hmm. <laughs> when I went to Deben, I attended Zuma's, uh, Zuma's, not Zuma court cases. Oh, wow. <laughs> you were there. Namo <laughs> <laughs> Sianda. You must look, DJ in, Sianda. look in the footage for you. Yeah, yeah DJ Sianda. Uh, oh, oh, dear, they were starting yeah. at that time. Yeah, more, uh, don't do a phone or phone at Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that time I was in Deben that time. Okay, yeah. So, they, and then I used to see, well, what's happening? I said, no, no, Zuma is coming for a trial. Mm. And then I'll just be there Interesting. overnight partying. Yeah, sure. So, but yeah, you know that thing, oh, 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 she you. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then I got, now, these comrades, they were talking, I know, I'm sure when they went in, what, 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 you know. And then uh, I mistake here. Yeah. Ah, I went to Eastern Cape one day, mm. like an hour on, on holiday. Remember there was that Zuma Mbeki issue, ne? Yes, hey. yeah. I went to the Eastern Cape, but ah, when oh, oh, why would you support Zuma? Mm. Oh, you mm, 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 I didn't know Mbeki, man. Like mm, mm. I know this guy was charismatic, and I was excited in in, in KZN. The time mm. I was an engineer in that time, but I was just. He liked, I mean, the way you will dance and sing, you sure, know, sure. and then talk, you know, for, I don't know, we're going to do this for the poor and everything. Mm. Eh, didn't know, but I, I let me, let me support him big, man. I'm changing this guy. <laughs> eh, that was my, <laughs> that was my mistake. Mm. So when they were going to Pulugan, yeah. I, I liked that thing of him big. Mm. Um, big must win. And mm. we're sitting there. I think I was with my, uh, with my brother in Long Tong Simpio Makas was mm. political again. Mm. So I asked him, what's happening in Puluma? I said, ah, ah, hey, we heard that um, um, Biggie lost. Mm. Eh. I was very sad now. Hey, we're very sad. Mm. You know, everyone was devastated. And mm. now we're just following people. Mm. And this guy is uh, he's lost. And then we were called into a national convention mm. by Terra and Mbazima, mm. mm. Andy Lengoshlu, all those, all those companies. You know, let's come. Let, let's hear what's it, what is to be done. It was mm. like sort of what needs to be done. Sure, sure. So I went there as well. Mm. And I joined COPE. Then you went to COPE. Okay. Then I went to COPE. Interesting. COPE. Then so, in COPE, yeah. Yeah. then in COPE, that's where now I, like I was, they appointed me as the youth provincial coordinator. Mm. Interesting. Okay. In the proof okay. Uh, so I, I was campaigning um, in, here in Johannesburg. Mm. And my mentor was in Zippo Kalipa. He was the former treasurer. He was a former treasurer um, of ESACP in Gauteng. Okay, that's where I got to understand what what organizing is. So when you go into branches. when you go into coalition with yeah. Cope now, you're actually yeah. going going into yeah. coalition with your old home. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. It, it, it disappeared. <laughs> so Nzipo was a mm. an SACP mm. person mm. and understood tools of analysis. All he says would be. Tools of analysis. I'm like, mm. what is this thing, tools of analysis? Mm. Is that not dialectical materialism? Mm. Hey, what is this thing? <laughs> oh, it took me a while. I did yeah. not know. You, you only thing. knew Maxwell's uh, equations and shit. Yeah, I yeah, just yeah. don't know. I said, sure. he said, you know, and you're listening to Zippo speaking and, you know, I said, hey, you know, analyzing. Mm. Hey, this guy, there's something I don't know in politics that I should mm. know. Mm. So he was my mentor. Sure. He taught me how to organize and how to build structures and, mm. you know, the whole thing of... So th that's what I've learned for, for, for from them. Yeah. And I, we, we campaigned in Avery Park a lot, Tembisa, Soweto. I've got a lot of colleagues, but myself, I was more in terms of let not get Zuma to be elected. He must lose. Right. That was my idea. Mm. Not like I wanted to have position. I didn't care about those things. Sure. Took my whole pension and I used it for my campaign. Hmm. And um, uh, we were at the office of Joint Nabesha. And Joint Nabesha will tell you, and we never used any money for organization. Took my whole pension hmm. and I, I, I pushed, we pushed Gauteng as a coordinator. And so so this is 
in the EFF? 2000, well, 2007. Sure. sure. 2006. So, six, so, seven so the, the, the campaign for Polokwane, you say? Yeah, after the, the, the Polokwane, yeah. yeah, yeah. the formation of COP in 2008. Sure, sure. And then I and then I, I resigned at mm, Sasol. Mm, mm. I resigned at Sasol. Said I'm I'm going to to into politics. Sure. So I took all my my my, my pension. Wow. And I I just I was, I used it to campaign everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So that's when now we we hired taxis and we had volunteers going mm. to the ground door to door. Everything. I loved it. I loved yeah. what I did. Yeah. I don't know. It made it created something in me that I maybe it was missing. Yeah. So I went to campaign and campaigned and campaigned. My aim was just that Zuma must not be a, a president. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Well, so. After that, they said, no, come to legislature and come be something. Mm. And I said, ah, no, it's not me. Yeah. I don't, I didn't want it. They invited me in many of those things. Mm. After, after the elections, I didn't go anywhere. I said, okay, it's done. The yeah. guy won. Okay. I said, you guys can go on with your politics. I'm yeah. going to go back to work. So mm. I became not an employee now at Sasong. I yeah. joined Foster Wheeler. As a consultant, so okay. did consultancy, da, 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 finished. But then, when CIC was elected mm. in, in the conference, and mm. um, so I was conflicted in COP because remember, he got the elected before COP was formed, right? Um, you remember the, the experiences at Sasso, no one was speaking out, even any black person to mm. the white managers with the white people. Mm. It was only him that he pronounced in. He says that um, uh, when he said, uh, get out, you know, uh, uh, must never be undermined by, you know, by any white person and all of that. We saw Tina others, all of us there. It's us all, every black professional, it's us all. We saw that it was the first time we saw a black person standing up to white supremacy. It was the first time. We've never seen it. So that actually inspired me because all the black managers we've spoken to, they would ne they've never spoken out. We were discriminated like in those places, like like everywhere, old neutral, you, you know in the Alexander, everywhere. Everywhere where black people they were employed, they were discriminated. Whether an email changed, you remember there was a problem. Companies had a problem with emails. Mm. Because we're discussing our problems there. How we are being discriminated. So CIC was the first person who called a white supremacy and cut its throat. It was the first person. So even though I was called, but I was conflicted because of, of I, I liked what he said, and I believe in terms of his articulation. Black emancipation, blacks must be respected, we must get the land, we must get the economy. That, that's that this is kind of correct. This is what we've experienced. But when COPE, they were fighting and everything, then I resigned. After two years in COPE, I resigned. Then I went back to, I went back to the NC. Mm. I was staying in Midrand that time. So we're just talking with the Midrand guys and, you know, and then so the NC, uh, campaigned a bit. I think I even went to, <clears throat> I think it was in, in Mangawung. I was there, if you look at mm. my time, I went to Mangawung mm. conference. Mm, mm, mm. I think that's when CIC was, was expelled. The expulsion thing. Yes, yeah. I saw DP was working with the Magdalene. She was DP. Yes, Magdalene. yeah, yeah. They were in, in a mall. That's where Ramaphosa became deputy yes, president. Yes, deputy president. Yeah, yeah. I was there. Sure. If you look at my uh, thing, is there. Mm. Um, yeah, so I, I was there, so, but I was so sad that the CIC was actually expelled, you know, they, they didn't want to take his letter and all of that. So, but when I heard that there was a friends of, of Julius Malema, so I was following them in terms of what is said, the political developments, because what actually attracted uh, many of us, um, you know, people, the things that, you know, you would just become a fanatic and, and, and follow, you mm. know, individual and all of that. But... We listen to his articulation on the issues of land, the issues of economy, the issues in terms of getting rid of tenders. We know that we've seen it and experienced it. And free education, quality. We've seen that because we're in ECAS and everything. So people like that, but it's the first person that I'm hearing this person talking like this. So, mm -hmm. and then I, I got to know now in terms of the socialism, what is socialism and all of that. But even when I entered EFF, I did not know about socialism, mm. 100%. Mm. But Zipo, my mentor in co, he was from social, SACP, but he did not articulate it well so that I can understand it. So I resigned in the ANC when they said, what is to be done? Uh, <laughs> I remember they, I, I was actually asking them, where can you join and everything? And you mm. know, so it was a bit difficult. And uh, I even went to Uncle Tom, but I was outside. <laughs> and then there's a guy there, uh, Shem, may he so rest in peace, Parks. 
So I wanted to really get in and pack so I came there, like, what are you doing? Like, no, there's a, you know, I want to go in and everything. So they did not, they did not really let me in there. And Kambada was outside. I was, I was coming from, I think the uncle's tomb, there was, it happened not just after the, that, that uh, conference. It was not too far apart. Mm. So I was still mm. sort of ANC, but you know, in so it was like, hey, I saw, I was talking to a guy called Bongani, them Tunyelo, some Bongani Tunyelo. So I said, he said he's inside. Mm. So I waited and waited, but I said, I'm not, let's go. But then I managed to catch up with the EFF in their first meeting in Setibeng, what, 13. Then I was articulating that, look, I don't want to really be involved, but mm. I'm from the, the COPE. I've, I've mobilized before. For, yeah. I'm, I'm available in terms of assistance, in terms of the guys to move forward. And it said you're one of the yeah. key organizers within the EFF. Like, <laughs> you're, you're one of the organizational... Yeah, um, so, we, we, uh, then I said to them, I'm not interested. I don't want anything. I don't, I just want to be behind the guys and mm -hmm. support them. Mm -hmm. And, um... I remember, uh... In Parliament, I was there to cover Parliament, and I was like, yeah. "Can I interview you?" Like, yeah. no, I, I'm not. I don't want to be in front of the camera. Like, yes, I, I like yeah. to work at the background. God gave me. I always say to everyone that maybe God gave me everything, the energy, and maybe the the mind into tactics, strategy, and tactics. Mm. But to really speak and 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 listen to the sound of my voice, uh, mm. and also be out there in cameras, and I, he didn't give me that, you know. I, I said, I don't like that. I like to be helping people mm. and, and be a support structure and push people forward, you know. So <clears throat> even then, I, I said, look, I, I don't want to be involved. I don't, I don't want this thing. I know how is it like, even yeah. in COPE. I mean, COPE, it was hectic. I mean, <laughs> if you think that, I mean, I think that the way that the organization was built mm. in terms of democratic sense, you know, you know, centralism mm. and putting systems in place, it really helped it. I know I was in COPE. Oh, there's anarchy there. Mm. Ah, there was a huge anarchy. Mm. I mean, the national will write a letter to the provincial structure, then the, the lower structure will veto that thing and say, no, we're not going to listen to you. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and Gauteng had their own constitution. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, how yeah. chaotic it was. So you learned so the lessons of that, that right away? Oh, uh, I didn't have a problem. Because a lot of people see, said the EFF would, would, would fall apart in oh, two years no. and five years and eight years. With my experience in the... Uh, I know, Cope. Mm. I was there. I was, I was, I was really in there. I mm. was like, I mean, I was in the side of the, the presidency, which is mm. Mm. Uter. Mm. Even the time they were fighting there, yeah. The I know exactly that sure. there were no systems in place. There were no rules and regulation. Mm. The the the, <clears throat> the mistake I think Cope did was not to um, to solidify the constitution. They, we never had any code of conduct, how we're going to present. Sure. So it was a very wobbly constitution. Mm. People would do anything that is they, they wish. Mm, mm, mm. I mean, that's why I'm saying that the, the national will say that we've taken as a CNC that this is how you are going to build structures, what based. Yeah. How thing they will veto that thing, but no, we're not mm. going to listen to you. We are going to build this thing, a VT, yeah. a, a, a structure or what. And then you had a problem with how they with the Tswan. And Tswan will come and say, eh, hey, <laughs> we are going to build it in a cluster form, mm. not what you are saying as in the mm. province. So there was a huge chaos. So when the EFF was being formed now, and then the, the, the way that we are running the organization is run the organization, democratic, you know, you know, the centralism, um, you know, code of conduct and all of that. That's solidified in terms of what sure. the organization might be. Mm. I know that that made EFF to really grow. Mm. I supported it that. We must have that, you know. So, I mean, in the in the in the EFF, whatever people they say, like you know, just a propaganda. EFF, you do debate, you you raise your issues, and and, and militantly so. Mm. But when the decision is taken, you need to rally mm. with it. Mm -hmm. That's what we were taught when we came in, and that has been like that. Yeah. Well, so yeah. I joined them, and then can I, I can I ask you on that? Mm. Um, because I'm also mindful that you. Mm. Or a busy person and probably yeah. already have to run. Yeah. Um, but we definitely have to have part two and part three. <laughs> yeah, of yeah. Um, yeah. But let's come to the end, right, of okay. the story. Yeah. Because we've seen that journey building up. Yeah. And now you're actually mm. 
in power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in Johannesburg. In, in Johannesburg. Yes. You're an MMC and yes. you're an MMC in charge of public safety. And firstly, I think that's one of the probably hardest jobs in the world because of the crime. Yeah. Joburg's, you know, one of the most crime ridden cities in the world. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're now tasked with the public safety in that city. Can you tell us what has been the most rewarding part of that and what has been the, the hardest part of your of your role now that you've actually assumed governmental power in Joburg? Look, it was, um, for me, it was a, you know, to go in there and be seconded, to be deployed mm. uh, to the public safety, it was not a, I can't, I can't say that I'm honored, it's, it's nice, but mm. I like to say that I, very humbled by the confidence shown by me by the leadership. Sure, sure. And in terms of Barry Mukini must go there and must go and implement the mm. policies, mm. Uh, the manifesto of the EFF. Because remember, when you are deployed in, in the in that government space, yeah. you need to go back about what were the commitments of the EFF to the people. Because remember that that manifesto we consulted widely. What do you want us to do when we get into government? Mm. So for me, it was not that it's a self gratification. Oh my God, I'm the and I'm the thing is I'm the I'm the MMC. It was to say to me, with the commitments we made, how am I going to implement them? Mm. That was what makes me not to sleep every day. Sure, I'm not internalizing that I'm an MMC. No, I'm a deployee to say that we promised these commitments to mm. one or two mm. and the people. For example, we said that we are going to increase the roadblocks so that we're able to do search and seizure for drugs and everything, number one. Number two, we must strengthen the law enforcement, capacitate it more, make it aggressive so that they are able to deal with drugs, to crime and all of that. When I got there, I said, these are the policy statements and the manifestos mm. that, that, we, that we consulted our people under the EFF. Yeah. For me, it was like, how am I going to make this and happen? Did you feel like government was, was able to... to to move as fast as you wanted government to move? Yeah, or did you, true. yeah. <laughs> what was that experience of, of, of actually governing? Yeah. Um, did you get frustrated or, or yeah. actually did you feel like, no, you know what, actually there is room to move quite fast? Yeah, I told them that come hell or shine, mm. the commitments of our people, I'm going to, I'm going to put them in. Mm. Even if I had to step on people's toe or then, or, 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 or let's say, Baba Menge washing, when <laughs> Yeah. That that's what I wanted to do. I was mm. on a war path mm. to implement the commitments we made to our people. Mm. I, I, I said, I'm not going to sleep. I'm going to ensure that I use anything, anything possible to do that. Mm. But when you got there, you got uh, support touched by the administrators. Hmm. By the way, something that you must be dealing with as mm. the people in the media space. Mm. I challenge you now. Uh, you know, every time you're always saying that politician, politician, politicians. Sure. Sure. Well, remember, we always come and go. But there's a bureaucracy there. Mm. There's administrators mm. who are supposed to be implementing the policies and all these uh, things that we said that we'll do. They will sabotage you. Hmm. Like, they will sabotage you like straight. They will, you'll get those nice presentations. And, no, no, we are there. We've got, we're reaching our target. We spend the money, 90%. Mm. You go there, there's no service delivered. Mm. You know, we, when I went into that department, everyone was acting. There was a moratorium in terms of position. So mm. there was an uncertainty mm. what actually happens. Uh -uh, you had an IIOC unit. That's the camera unit that is not working. Mm. I mean, the, that thing that, uh, you know, the people used to use in calls, they would call, hey, we see you be a person be marked. Yeah. There's no um, there's no response. I mean, in the 20th century, I mean, we, mm. we said you want to be in the fourth industrial revolution, but you cannot automate what you see on the CCTV mm. and activate a response unit mm. like that. I think we're not working, but we're spending a lot of money on that thing. Sure. I don't know, but it can't be. You had a JNPD that did not have uniform. Mm. You, had a, you had a JNPD that was depressed, that was had a low morale mm. because they've never been promoted. They've never been progressed in terms of, you know, the, the promotion. They never got even, you know, no change of their uh, clothes, mm. uh, 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 uniform. Mm. They last received uniform three years back. Others, they were like, you know, uh, uh, torn, mm. their, 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 their uniform. Sure. They didn't have cars. 
the, 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 the cars, you'll find that in a kind of BMW that they have or in a combi. That's why you see them going with combis, mm. turn inside. Mm. It's because they don't have cars. Mm. So when you got there, we had to go, what's happening with the cameras? Uh, why is this thing not uh, uh, upgraded? I mean, you still have analog cameras. Hmm. Analog, we're on digital now. I mean, mm. I, don't, I don't know, we're in somewhere now. Mm, mm, mm. You still have analog cameras. Sure. And we're spending a lot of money on that thing. I said, this thing must be upgraded. So we pushed up until now they're busy with it now. Mm. And then we unlocked the, I mean, when we came in as a government, uh, when we came in there, <coughs> the contract was signed for the cars. So they're unleashing the, the cars now. Mm. Mm. The police are having cars. Next week, we are launching for the first time. After fighting and fighting, uh, we, have, we are, because in the EFF manifesto, they say that we must strengthen law enforcement and fight crime and drugs. Mm. So that one they were going to implement next week. We are implementing for the first time in JMPD, a crime prevention and combating unit for the first time, mm. because JMPD is a tri band Law, traffic law enforcement, by law enforcement, mm. and crime prevention. Sure. They have done traffic. That's why you see them everywhere. Yeah. Yes, they've done by law, but it's not, it's not enough. We're sure. going to sure. restructure them. Mm. Now, this was never done before. Yeah. They had sort of a unit that does something like mm. that mm. because they were linking their crime prevention during roadblocks. Right. Which right. is, you can do that. Sure, I have no sure. problem yeah, with yeah, it. Sure, sure. But we did not have a unit that was doing crime analysis, crime stats. Uh, working with the with the community, yeah. what based, checking crime, searching community, community crime intelligence, crime crime intelligence. Sure, sure. patrolling at night, mm. it, because what they would do is that the traffic they would do traffic outside, yeah. not going inside the houses. So is that your your signature kind of intervention to to create this third crime fighting <sighs> strategy and intervention of the JMPD? Yes. So in other words. When we came in, there was a lot of, of, of cries in terms of the, you know... We're not safe, the, the, we're not the safe law. MMC. We're yeah, not safe, we, we, you know <laughs> that. Like, the Joburg life is tough. The yeah. other law enforcement, you know, they were crying about law enforcement mm -hmm. agents. You know who they are. Mm. But I said, look, they asked me, MMC, what are you doing? Yeah. And then I said to the, to the, to the, the directors of, mm. of JMPD, mm. we have to do a crime-busting unit. Mm. We have no change, but MMC, we support you. Mm. That's what we've been looking for all our time. We've never had it. It's a new directorate, yeah. crime prevention unit. That's going to go and work with the patrollers. Mm, mm. That's the one that goes man, uh, into the community. Sure. Just, but when people are sleeping, it goes and patrols. Mm, mm. Not, not doing traffic and roadblocks. Yeah. Hey, hey, the one that is going to be arresting criminals. <laughs> it's there. Sure. And working, it, it, it was going to be working with the... With the patrollers, mm, I mean, mm. they can work with the CPF, working also with the police yeah, yeah. as a multiplier. So there's going to be not a single time now when people are calling for law enforcement, mm. no one comes. Sure. So now it's going to go into that direction. I and, said. That. And how many how many people are involved are involved in that? Look, we've. Uh, it sounds well, like that sounds like a much needed, much needed. Yes, 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 yes. We we um we 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 are in total three hundred and eighty six. Sure. Right. Sure. And then those people, we've taken them out on a shift system. Yeah. We are taking them now into what is called a flex system mm. because mm -hmm. crime does not have a shift. Yeah, sure. And what is so surprising and people did not know, mm. the thugs and criminals knew that police, they knock off at six. Wow. From four o'clock till eight o'clock, there's no police mm. in the country anyway. What? Yes. Wow. I said, bah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> well, that doesn't sound like a good idea. And then I, I said, I, I, I said that, okay, guys, well, what's happening? Okay, what's yeah. the shift system? Yeah, yeah. We, 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 we knock in, we, we, we go in, we clock at six o'clock, mm. we parade at seven ish. Mm. Then from there, we go to our post. Yeah, we buy a drive again. Sure. Uh, post, uh, post in, yeah. mm. so, okay, that, that changed all oh, about two hours at work. Okay, mm. I said, mm. okay. And I said, okay, mm. how do you change over? And then you must drive from your post. Yeah, your changer. Mm, and mm, mm. I said, hey, chief, now what happens between <laughs> four, five and this yeah. period? Oh, no, we are in the changing shift. Sure. And then we got crime stats from the station. Yeah. Like in, in, in hourly times, like in the time when and the, the criminals were. <laughs> wow. Jesus Christ. I said, but guys, you can see. Yeah. Criminality starts rising from three o'clock. Sure. 
they know that what that's a time we are the mm. mindset we are going to mm. change shift yeah when as by harm by and all of that and and you know at that time so the time becomes very high four five six seven eight and then starts going down mm. nine like that starts going down so this new unit will create more visibility yes, also more at visibility. that time okay yeah, so would, would we actually see we would see these jmpd patrols more yes. around the city and we've we've done that analysis and say that um because of the shift arrangement we had let us go out um on that uh, shift arrangement mm. let's do flexi times mm. we're going to be uh, 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 um, saturating it about in those times mm. where people are coming out of work remember sure. you've got in town you've got a lot of uh, of the employees mm. going to you know the taxi rank around that time yeah, yeah. that's where pickpocketing and sure. choke holding is happening sure. around that period so during that time we'll be saturating all the, 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 the areas mm. and be there and also we've used the uh, the crime stats from SEPs in mm. terms of which is the highest uh, police station with the highest crime sure. mm. that's Jopek Central hmm. is your key mm. Jopek Central, Hillbro, mm. Yeovil, Honeydew mm. Um, um, Alexandra, Deep Slot, Ivory Park, mm -hmm. yeah, well, and Midrand. Hijackings in Midrand. Have you learned anything about the patterns of crime outside of the, the times? Because that's really inter interesting to me, you know, yeah. like when crime is happening um, and some of the insights that you've been able to understand mm. that, you know, even people can use to defend themselves and, and be more wise. Mm. No, we found that, yeah, the, the violent crime. Yeah. Uh, pickpocketing, don't know that thing of chalk holding, mm. or the chalk holding, and we find that there's a lot of criminality happening inside the houses mm. by the people that you know. Mm. Especially, we find that when they're reporting, the people were drunk, hmm. you know, drunk and you know, uh, alcohol, mm. uh, you know. Mm. So there are those uh, crimes that are really happening in the inside of the, 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 the houses, mm. Mm. and then you've got hijackings that are really happening there. And, mm. Uh, mm. Cash and transit is not, it, it's, it, it's not a a lot but it does happen it is a problem yeah. Yeah. i'm always going to be ready because even this new unit will be having a unit to be dealing with the cash and transit sure sure um and um yeah so how do we uh, address hijacking hijackings is that remember now with the crime with the with this unit uh, mm. with the crime prevention unit mm. you have a tactical unit it's called the jmpd uh, it's called J jmpd uh, um, tactical reaction unit mm. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a it's a fusion of the undercover unit and the k9 Hmm. forces into one now they are going to be in one room sure crime analysis crime stats and everything mm. and the cac was correct in, in his uh, analysis and actually i was i was going to do that we are mm. going to have uh, cars in each and every off ramp mm. but all the cars must be in the off ramp we do have a free patrol by the way mm. they came to present to me i said oh you are, you are free patrol they have never seen you man mm. Mm. Where do you hide yourself? But no, we're in this post, this post, this post. Mm. Yeah, but you must come back and mm. look at the, you know, you, you, you must look at the hot spots. Mm. So they went back and then they are going to present again on Monday in terms of uh, what are they going to do moving forward, change that they're going to do. I said you must man up M1 of Rams, man up N1 of Rams, mm. man up the border of the, the the boundary of coj so that whatever crime happens here mm. they know that these bastards will get them on the off ramps if we miss them on the off ramps they must know that if they in in the in the boundaries of, of city of johannesburg there are two freeway patrol unit there mm. and freeway patrol i said to them that you know you are normal mpos and i mean they fall under that that they, they call it a tactical unit mm. Mm. i said to them that they must go now and do uh, and retrained mm. and they must carry those big automatic rifles because you don't know what happens you know these people they're going to have a cash heist there you can have hijacking and everything mm. so that unit is be dealing with that kidnappings as well sure, sure. Um, they will be doing operations like frequently now mm. and i want to say right right now they're gonna be a i call it a passivation month so i don't want to be getting irritated calls people mm. must let us do do our work mm. they said that what we must uh, we must do the work I'm not going to negotiate with the criminals so we urge the community to really let us do our work and must not be sympathetic because we're not going to be sympathetic on tax and that's what they must know uh, i mean within the ambit of the law but yeah mm. we have a passivation period where fire by fire you're going to hear people rushing somewhere in deep slot uh, you know <clears throat> what we also found that in the areas in the townships there is 
really a lack of 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 of, of crime fighting. Mm. We, we we need to look into those areas mm. like deep slot. People are dying like like flies. Mm. It's never uh, reported. Ivory Park, mm. you know, you've got Alex where patrollers are being killed like flies. Huh. It doesn't make the news. Huh. Surprise doesn't make like the, the news. Mm. And then you've got uh, you know uh, uh, El, El Dorado Park. You know, yeah. uh, people yeah. are being shot. You know, uh, our people there. there our colored folks are crying every single day about drugs and all of that, and mm. nothing is really happening. Mm. In Orange Farm, kidnappings, mm. shootings, and ransom. The something which is coming up is ransom. Yeah. And then, so, but the, that has been this uh, um, kidnapping mm. has been happening on the uh, Muslim business people mm. and also the Pakistanian and the Ethiopians, the one who mm. owns by the shops. Mm, mm, mm. It's a lot there in, in a Dale area. Yeah. And uh, what's that? Area then, uh, that area in, in the south mm -hmm. where the, there's you know you got cash and carries those business sure, people sure, sure. and I've been encouraging them but no they must start they must start banking you must not keep money in in, in you know mm -hmm. your hard cash mm -hmm. they must start using paperless as well yeah, well so yes this new unit will be dealing with that crime sure. analysis will sure. be having a big office like you not know, to one jump street mm -hmm. sort of <laughs> they must have every day yeah. I want to know what the shift before found. Yeah. You can't come and say you're patrolling in, in, in Alex, you're patrolling in Deep Slot. Absolutely. You don't come with a knife. You don't come with a yeah. gun. You don't come with anything. Absolutely. That is the, you can't. It means that what people are just there for a salary. But even for the country, if 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 we can even make a dent mm. on crime in Johannesburg, mm. that, that changes the picture of South yes. Africa because you know there's this image of Joburg as being, you know, um, a safe haven for for violent crime yeah and at some point the country has to get it right mm. um and yeah if you can be a person yeah. who contributes <laughs> to that then the nation think, will, will will thank you i think we must we must put money mm. into it mm. and uh, we must be there is a um there is a a clause there in the complementary complementary pillars of the eff that we must create a law enforcement that is accountable to the people sure Right, um, and 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 also we must never have a situation where the the the, the law enforcement takes bribes. Mm. Um, they actually, yeah. Well, so that actually undermines the safety of our people. Yeah, I think it collapses everything. If as if you if a law in, law enforcement officers takes bribe, I think it's it's I think it's very bad. Mm. I, I, I'm looking forward to the report it because mm. uh, once you, you actually do that, it means that the crime weight will thrive. Sure. Uh, in, 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 in here in, in South Africa. So in the JMPD, we want to create a law enforcement that is accountable to mm. people, mm. where also, also that those law um, uh, uh, thing, law enforcement officers do not uh, take sides and then start fighting political battles. Sure. And they must never be in in cahoots mm. with the criminals, mm. uh, which is what the comment has been saying, not me, sure, sure. that they are seeing some of the law enforcement makers going to collect, mm. to collect in spaza shops. Mm. Mm. They collect uh, with zamazamas. Mm. They collect with drug dealers. They sure. are in the pockets. Sure. Others in those dark buildings, we've mm. heard that they mm. are, they are there. They go and collect from those people who are selling yaup, mm. and people are seeing them. I think it's very sad. I think it's it's counter revolutionary. If we can deal with that decisively, I think that we can we can change. Uh, you know, you know, uh, um, um, we we are able you know, to really fight this this, uh, this crime. And <clears throat> I think also we must put more money and hire more police officers. Uh, police officers are in a four day in four day shift. Uh, they get very tired because they work for like you know the 12 hours mm. they used to be abused before mm. and used over that yeah what well, so for you 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 must hire more people yeah. or if you really want them to come out you must do what we did in the jmpd we said uh, look guys we need you we're going to give you more standby allowance mm. be available mm. so the police i think SEPs must be given lots of money more standby allowance there must never be abused that you must work more hours without actually getting an incentive that is the i think that that's a debate that we need to have absolutely you need to you yeah. need to pay the law enforcement mm. 
well sure. so that they are able not to really be tempted to take any bribes. Mm -hmm. Because remember, before they become police officers, they are kids, they take them to school. Sure. And I'm not sure if, if, if maybe I was in the position we were mm -hmm. maybe national somewhere, we would look in terms of channeling the budget more mm -hmm. into our police, mm -hmm. uh, um, promote them, yeah. recognize them. Make sure, maybe you can even say to the, you know, that their kids, you know, uh, uh, have a, a way that they, <clears throat> you know, uh, uh, maybe their siblings and everyone, they can get mm. sponsorships to go to school because mm. sometimes they are worried about, hey, Mundanam, is it going to school? What's going to happen? And so we need to be creative in terms of how do we keep them motivated? And they say that I'm willing to die for the country. Some of them, but I, I mean, I'm, I'm here. Mm. I, I mean, I won't die for this nonsense because I'm not going to be, you know, be paid mm. enough. So we need to do that more. Dr. Chwaku, yes. um, I know you are probably mm -hmm. late for your next meeting and I want to make sure <laughs> Joburg is safe. <laughs> so, uh, you, man. But uh, you've been very generous yeah. with your time. Yeah. I hope this isn't the last time we get to talk, but it's been really interesting yes. and fascinating to hear yeah. your journey mm -hmm. and also um, your plans. And yeah. uh, we hope you come back to SMWX and good luck for Anytime. for your time in office and yes. I'm sure all the residents of Joburg are, are hoping that you can make a dent on on crime and and take the city forward yeah we haven't even spoken we spoke about crime we never spoke about the EMS the fire brigades the firefighters we never spoke about disaster yeah we never spoke about licensing uh, mm. licensing is a is a very hot topic and uh, you might be seeing things come out of the news okay uh, in terms of um innatis that that people can can hack and do transaction worth millions mm. uh, the the hardship that we're experiencing as a local government on licensing mm. um, it's very very sad and it's very bad and uh, the whole value chain uh, in, in, in the licensing is something that uh, we will uh, bring it up as well Okay. Um, because people will, um, last two months ago, mm. two, three months ago, we had an incident where a person was doing transaction in somewhere in Dubai mm. on licensing. And what you do is that if yourself, you're owing tickets, yeah. remember you can't renew a license. Yes. So they, they do what is called dumping. They take your debt and dump it to somewhere. What do, to Nepal might have passed on and all those sure. things. Tech ticket tealer that the people are, are using. And I asked the question wow. why innatives is not temper proof? Mm. Why people are able to clear a debt of someone else? And then when you do that, mm. then you find that if maybe I'm owing 40,000, mm. I'll give you 10,000. So if those transactions are 100 a day, I can easily make 100,000 a day. Wow. That, that is what we are. We, uh, we're dealing with uh, in the licensing. I mean, we've just opened the licensing uh, station now mm. that does learners and all of that. Sure, so sure. Also, uh, <clears throat> we've been having a problem. If you look at the patterns, mm. when mm. people are doing learners license and others are finishing quickly mm. and all of that. So they've got what is called a horse. Someone helps okay. you to pass. Yes. Yes, they help yes. you to pass. So they will tell you like, you know, you know that it's a, it's a <laughs> See, like, wow like that so we are having sort of those um mm. unethical yeah um, absolutely behavior that is happening there hmm. and in the licensing but the you've got men and women who are working very hard who wants to turn around sure, um, sure. this licensing thing but there are those mm. rotten apples mm. Mm. which because remember if you are a horse and you I'm sorry a jockey but the jockey Jockey, sure. Jockey, yeah, but 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 was but yeah, sure. Yeah, well, we are asked about <laughs> A or B like that. But, yeah, and then <clears throat> you they will they will they will they will assist you in terms of answering those learners' questions. Hmm. Those learners. Now my problem is that that person has failed, and is a danger to yeah, the, the community. Absolutely. We're having serious problems there, and then I think in the next episode we'll tell you how. Hmm. We have rebuilt, we're starting to rebuild disaster management. Sure. Of office, course. Of course. Which was which actually was almost non existent. Yeah. What do they do? So mm. we are busy with that. And then the struggles that the EMS, that the fire brigades yeah. they have. Yeah. With which you see them very efficient, but you know that they are bleeding inside because mm. we have to ensure that we have enough uh, um, red fleet, which is your fire engines, uh, the vandalization that is happening with the fire hydrants. Mm. 
mm. the challenges that we're experiencing in terms of the shakes which are burning mm. and all of that. So we've got a lot of the, I mean, the IOC, which is the, the camera unit, a lot of stuff that we also want to, wanted to really share with you. Mm. What mm. are the experience we've seen, the cameras that are not working. You've got all this beautiful system that can work, but, but you find that when you come in, people slash your own budget. Mm. And they want they want to be safe. They want us to put up fire. They want us to do all these things. But a person had an audacity to just cut the budget mm. on that. Mm. So, but there's a lot of stuff to talk about. Absolutely, yeah, and maybe yeah. maybe maybe the next time you come, we can have that. Yes, more we, policy, more policy and interventions. Yeah, yes. that that would be great. That would yeah. be great. We'd appreciate that. And it it sounds like you have a lot of a lot on your hands yeah, <laughs> yeah, what a, what a portfolio. Around, yeah to tenor, it's like someone was i don't know i always say to the to my colleagues there it's like someone wanted the public safety department to collapse and privatize it or mm. some, some sort mm. the way that people were neglected the way that there's anarchy <laughs> the, the way that things are being handled uh it's for me it's actually very sad is that the, were the people before taking the safety of, of the people yeah. at heart. I mean, JMPD was, you know, you know how it is, used to be one of the best, you know, we got them to be demoralized and, mm. and all of that and um, never promoted. They don't, some of them didn't even have guns, you know, and, mm. uh, um, even bullets, because remember, an officer had to, every three months, must go for shooting range mm. To, mm. To, to practice every time. And then disaster. I, I said to them, but disaster, they must be able to do risk assessment of fire, floods, everything. There must be, um, they must lie with geotechnical guys for seismic activity mm. and determine if there's going to be sinkholes, if they're going to, what's happening there. They must, they must predict disasters, mm. working with universities, with professors, weather services, everything. Mm. It's very important, but it was near collapsed. I mean, it doesn't have, uh, it was just, they don't even have sort of, you can say, I'm going to disaster office. Mm. And I said, no, give them an office down here. There's a there's an open space there. Sure. Let's let's get disaster going. I said, uh, I said, HOD, get get these people one, two, three, and four. Mm. Get mm. them this. You must call these people like that. Give so us there was just plan. Nothing. It was just, and then I said, disaster had a budget of about ten million mm. to be able if there's a if you get a chala, sure. a shack, sure. they are able to 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 give like you know uh, some relief mm. like mm. mattresses and food. Mm. Mm. Now. We were relying on, on, on the NGO. They did a very good job, sure, Shem, and sure. the givers and all of them, and they've been helping the, the disaster. Sure. But there's the money for disaster, guys. Mm. Can we order these things? And, and they don't even have their own warehouse to buy those things and store them in the warehouse. Mm. And I said, there's the, there's the warehouse is dead. Mm. Let's clean that. Let the people get mattresses, mm. basic things, so that when the shakes are, are burning and, and there's a disaster, we have a, a relief for the people. Mm. EMS, the, the aqua unit. Aqua unit, they want state-of-the-art uh, equipments when people when the people have been washed away by by floods they wanted some infrared uh, you know drones to be able to see you know uh, uh, able to really you know to detect people maybe under 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 the the, the what you call the, the river and all those mm. there's another sensor that they use when i forgot its mm. name mm. they wanted like new boats new fleet you know some basic thing that i saw but look at mmc this thing is is becoming old now yeah. we, it, it, we have never but the staff, I said, and then, I mean, you, you go to a, a budget, then people slash the budget on mm, those things. Mm, mm. Fire are really happening in Alex. Yeah, yeah, uh, sure. People, they take a budget where there's supposed to be a fire, uh, fire station in, 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 in Alex. And all. But you ask yourself, well, are people really serious about public safety? Mm. Yeah, well, infrastructure you need. Infrastructure, the infrastructure you need, mm. that needs to be capacitated. It needs money, right? And I ask them, there's an infrastructure you need. It's there. It's a top-notch infrastructure unit. Mm, mm. But also, I found it that you know they don't have a place to, you know, to to really operate. Uh, uh, um, who's their superintendent? How they work? It's not clear, you know. Mm. But with the help of the of the leadership of of JMPD, we are all look at these things. We're turning it around. Everyone, you know, um, disaster. You've got. Uh, I think I spoke about licensing. Was bigger about a lot. Mm. I mean, Marlboro. Uh, you know, the problem there with those licensing is that once they are removed on inatis to transact on yeah. inatis, they become our problem. If they've been implicated that they are the ones who are doing fraud, mm, mm. They, they, 
when I entered, I think even the time of the other MMC, there were 72 of them mm. that were removed from Inetis to, to be licensing people. Sure. Now, those people, they can't do any licensing. What else are they going to do? Mm. They were sitting, doing nothing for almost two years. Hmm. Okay, others, okay, they were deployed. Some of them, uh, I, must, I must confess, they were deployed. But you had another 20 or so. Sure. They were coming in and out. They, they didn't hmm. have anything to really do. So others, they were taken to the camera unit, mm. uh, others deployed, you know, slowly but sure. There were the three women that we've been here for four years, mm. were just coming in and eat and then go home sure. for the longest of time. So we're dealing with that. So that is the danger with that thing of innateness, because we must ask the innateness, why is their system not timber-proof? Because they claim that people are able to rig it and rig and, mm. and do transactions. So mm. that thing is, is hitting us hard, because when there's an alleged... Uh, you know, corruption or break of security within that innate is. Yeah. They remove them from the system, then they can't transact at all. Because if we if we put them back, then they 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 they, they, they close the station. Because remember, we we are we are working under the, the mercy of the province. The province we uh, I mean is the one that takes the profit at the end. We we sure. have a split of eighty twenty of of twenty eighty. Mm. So um, and the, the province, we are the ones who are doing the work on the ground and on behalf of the province. So, um, 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 if, 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 if those people, they, they are alleged to be corrupt, they are removed on inities, they are a lot of these people. Mm. You don't have anything for them. Hmm. And now they have this dark cloud on their way. Well, they are thugs, they are, they are sure. thieves. And, so, and uh, are, we still have to incur expenses as well exactly and, and and that's what now after this unit i'm done i'm going to be focusing on licensing mm, now mm. to go like toe to toe with them those people mm. and 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 then when you go to any licensing department you get stash and stash of papers mm. application papers mm. because province doesn't they didn't give us in terms of the resources to archive them mm. we go to any license to Zobon. sure there's a stash you go to office there's a stash like you mm. use you mm. sit with with, with application forms. Mm. I said, okay, no, I'm coming with that thing. They will mm. sort it out. We have a warehouse. They mm. might do something. But mm. they said you must be careful because it's statutory mm. and all of this. It's people's applications and poppy act mm. and everything. So we're working on that. Mm. So, and in, in, in Lang Lachte, there are so much paper such that there are rats there now. <laughs> there are rats. Some of them are dead. Some of them are dead. Some of them are dead. So, these are the practical things I tell you that mm. when you got they were experiencing something you can do. I mean, as well if I have more money, you know, I had more budget. Sure. <laughs> I said to them, no, no, guys, I'm coming to licensing. Mm. Mm. Licensing, I'm going to take all those papers. There's a warehouse of ours there. Mm. I'm going to put them there. Mm. And, uh, and then I'm going to be in engagement with the MEC for transport. I'm going to work with the M MMC Kenugune. Mm. We go and see her. And tell her that, well, one, the profit sharing is too small because we are the when we make a billion a year so it's 80 20 mm. she gets 80 percent we get 20 percent sure. but we still in that 20 percent have to pay the people pay the rent mm. pay all our operational expenses mm. and we still have to uh, and she does not take her papers at some point the province must take those papers mm. so mm. i said number one we propose that we must increase that, that, that profit sharing percentage. Number two, she must take her papers. Because if she doesn't take those papers, I'm going to take the papers and put them on that parking space there in, in, in the province. Mm. I'm going to take mm. all those papers. <laughs> what for the parking space? Mm. Because we're tired. It's almost a year and they don't want to respond. We've mm. been begging them. Mm. Please tell us what to do with these papers. Sure. Do, we, do we shred them? Mm. But no can't because it's statutory yeah. that we must keep them a certain period. Sure. Where do we do it? Must we microfilm? Mm. Microfilm is a lot of money. Or we must take them to, to, to metro filing. Mm. It's a lot of money. It's a cost, mm. which is not enough. So what do you want us to, to actually do? Mm. We can't renovate properly. We, we can't uh, go to, you know, to state of the art. Now, what they're doing that, you know, they rather uh, support RM, 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 RMTC, R R TMC. You know, there's this new company that they like on licensing. They, they are on, on to that. Mm. But these stations are working very well, you know. So that's why <clears throat> I said I'm going to go ahead and launch the normal um, a licensing station to our people on the ground yeah. in, in Alex everywhere because mm. some of those people cannot go to these posh places sure. that RTMC is opening, all these nice mm. uh, places and everything, and they, they want you to really go online to apply. I said our people don't have data, man. 
They must have a place that they can walk in and do application and do learners. That's why we opened for the first time a licensing center there. I said, I'm coming to license. After I'm done with JPD, mm. I'm going to licensing. Then you're going to hear what's happening there. Uh, you know, you got Tautas there, Tautas mm. which are now... <clears throat> Yeah, it's a big problem. You know, yeah, the tautas no, you know, anytime you go into a licensing center, you just see all kinds of... Yes. It's uh, a good, look, it's a good thing. They, they, you know, they're teaching people how to drive and everything, but just do your thing. Don't, don't try to interfere with the officials mm -hmm. there. That's where it becomes a problem. Yeah. You know, the guys, they want to leave. They want people to... people pushing the yeah, line and you don't line. know, did yes. someone pay someone? You don't exactly. know. You just see someone no. coming in front of you for yeah. no reason. Like I understand, you yeah. know, they want to... Uh, you know they want to zamazama mm -hmm. you know, but there's no jobs you know yeah, but sure. it must be done proper you know sure. we must make a decision how are we going to do this mm -hmm. do we allow it and if we allow it what what can we do what mechanism can we so that mm -hmm. it does not inconvenience people and all of that because sometimes if you don't want to do favors for them mm -hmm. they know where these officials of licensing mm -hmm. stay they threaten them sure you see it has gone into that that point now wow. where now they start to say that if you don't help me mm -hmm. If you don't help me, then we'll see each other a cast. Sure. Yeah, boy, it's becoming a problem. Mm. That time, mm. yeah, what they, they call them the Q people. What about Q? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, okay, yeah, yeah, Qish, yeah, bon, yeah, zam, yeah, mm. Mm. But now, well, they inconvenience you and bang in front of you. Mm. But now, when they start now to interfere with the operation sure. of the gun, that's where I come in. Sure, sure. Then I don't support that. Mm. You know, they can try and do their stuff mm. with Bazaar and my team. Mm. And in, in Florida now, the problem is that there are so many of the people mm. in the yard, such a mm. way that other cars, they get stolen. Sure. Yeah, well, so they, it becomes a security breach. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I, we don't have a problem in terms of Uzama Zama, Bazaar, you know, to see when opportunities, mm. but they must be done properly. Mm. People must not, uh, there must be no criminality that's happening there. Sure. We might have to have a talk with some of them, Guti, what do you guys do? Mm what do you seek to achieve so that I can we can see in terms of how the licensing can work with the with the driving companies sure. and also the touters I mean, they call them the Q people mm, mm. Uh, how, how, how can we do this thing and ensure that it does not infringe people's right it yeah. doesn't become a, 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 a criminal it's an it's an engagement and conversation we'll have also in consultation with the political and with, with our party, what will be the attitude, what we think sure, about it. But sure. at the end, we want people to have Zama, you know, but now Zama and then mm. it starts to be a, a, a criminal activity. Mm. Then mm. we deal with it decisively. Thank you. Thank you, Doc, yeah. for being yeah, so yeah, generous yeah. with your time. And yes. we've got a full agenda for part two. <laughs> Shem, I've been cancelling quite a lot. I'm sorry yeah. about that. No, no, no. Yeah. We know how it is. But Good. Thank um, you very much. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Comment down below, like, share, subscribe, and stay locked on SMWX. The Caesar and Welsh Experience Podcast. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah.